kinds of meditation and many different purposes. It depends upon your intention. The style of meditation often practiced in yin yoga is mindfulness, sort of a zen light version of awareness that's based on simple awareness and calm abiding, known as shamatha. It's the practice of presence, of being right here, right now. The real yoga is what you can't see, to paraphrase David Williams. The real yoga is deeper. It's the way we breathe, and how we pay attention to what's happening. To do this, we simply need to be awake to sensations within and to the effect of these sensations on our emotions and our thoughts. By paying attention, we can decide more skillfully what is the most appropriate action or non-action we can make at this moment. Should I go deeper? Can I relax more completely? Should I back off a bit now? Should I release my breath? How will I know if I don't pay attention? This is a metaphor for life. Most people live their lives on autopilot, simply reacting to whatever is happening to them. Like Pavlovian dogs, we receive a stimulus, we salivate. Mindfulness during our yoga practice awakens within us the realization that we can actually choose how we want to react, regardless of the situation we are in. Pain, pleasure are to be expected in life. Suffering and happiness is created by the way we react to pain and pleasure. By paying attention during our practice, we build our awareness muscles so that we can pay attention at other times during our lives when we find ourselves suffering or living unskillfully. We can awaken to the realization that we have a choice. There are psychological and physiological benefits to mindfulness as well. There are many studies that have shown that mindfulness, just simply paying attention to what is actually happening, can reduce our stress levels, calm the heart, reduce blood pressure, reduce inflammation, improve insomnia, lessen anxiety and depression, deal with chronic pain, improve energy levels, improve exercise tolerance, improve concentration, as well as many other benefits. When we add mindfulness to our yin yoga practice, we gain all these benefits, along with the benefits from being in the pose itself. There are a few people who find meditation to be unhelpful or even detrimental, but these are rare individuals. For these people, looking too closely at what is actually happening in their bodies and lives can increase anxiety or make their particular challenge worse. If you find that meditation just doesn't work for you, stop. Forget the practice and go about your regular daily routine. But don't give up just yet. Seek out an experienced meditation teacher and explain to her your situation. There are many kinds of meditation and there likely is a style that will fit you. Begin our meditation. First, find a seat that's comfortable for you, one that will allow you to sit steady without fidgeting for three, five minutes, or even ten minutes at a time. Generally, we sit cross-legged, but this is not always required. For some people, they have a challenge sitting cross-legged. First, make sure you are sitting on something. If you happen to visit a Zen monastery, you notice that the abbot who's probably been sitting in meditation for 40 years, sits on something. You can use a pillow like this, which is called a zafu, it's a Japanese term which means meditation cushion, or any other pillow, or even a book, phone book. The idea is to get the hips high enough up that you can tilt the top of the hips forward a little bit, creating the natural arch in the lower back. If you sit right on the floor, you tend to lose that normal curve. So do sit up. You'd like to make a nice pyramid base with the knees and your sitting bones. And that gives you a strong, solid foundation. However, for some people, if they have an issue in the inner knees, they might find that sitting cross-legged is not very comfortable. So a couple of options here. You can put a block underneath the knee that gives you a problem. Some people need to support both legs. If you do sit with your legs wide up in the air, feel free to support both legs with cushions. 
Another option, if it's just one knee that's giving you a problem, bring that foot in first. You might find that that takes the pressure out of the knees. Another option, which is a very wonderful way to sit, is to sit on your heels with the cushion between your feet. This is known as seisha style in Japan. And it's a wonderful way to sit. You're very symmetric. Sitting cross-legged is not actually symmetric. Always there's one foot in front, which tends to subtly tilt the body. Here you're completely symmetric. You're nicely grounded. But for some people, this creates problems for the ankles. So if you want, you can roll up the towel, put it underneath the, the arch of your ankle. For other people, the kneecaps complain here. But one of these ways is not better than the other. They're just diff different ways of finding a comfortable seat. So choose the seat that's going to work for you. Then take a moment to snuggle down into the floor. So we want to begin by getting nicely grounded. So from there, we can rebound up through our core, let the heart open so your lungs can fill, let the shoulders drop back and down. You can relax the hands into the lap, the tips of the thumbs touching, or just have the hands resting on your thighs. Palms can either be down or up. You might even make a little circle of awareness with your first finger and the thumb. So we take a moment to get down. As we elongate through our core, we're also lengthening the neck. The top of the head pushes up towards the sky. The ears are back slightly, just so the ears are above the shoulders. So we avoid the head forward position that puts so much stress on the, the neck. The tongue is generally to the roof of the mouth, just behind the teeth. And the eyes need to be closed or cast down on the floor in front of you. And you just lightly gaze at a spot, maybe two or three feet in front of you. Now that we've got the posture just right, we start to go inside. And we begin by setting an intention. And this can be as simple as reminding yourself why you're doing your practice today. Now we turn inward and we start to notice any pockets of tension in the body. Just notice if there's any tension in the shoulders, the neck, the jaw, and just let them go. As you do that, we still want to sit up nice and tall. So you might find that noticing your breath allows you to accomplish both of these. Notice what happens as you happen to breathe. Notice how as you inhale, you naturally sit up taller. Notice how as you exhale, you naturally relax tension. And you don't have to do this. It just happens. So you just allow these waves of breath to flow through us. And as we sit, thoughts will arise in our mind. And that's the nature of mind. Our mind creates thoughts. That's what it does. It's a thought factory. We're not trying to kill the mind. The mind is very useful. We'll need it later on. So we're not trying to stop the thoughts from coming. But rather, what we practice in mindfulness is not becoming attached to the thoughts. It's okay to have thoughts. Just don't allow the thoughts to take you away. So a thought arises, let it go. A new thought comes up, and let that go. So we keep coming back. And it's useful to help us stay present, to have an anchor. An anchor is something that prevents you from drifting away. The most commonly used anchor is the anchor of our breath. So we can turn inward and just feel the rise and fall of each breath. Another technique that can help you stay with the breath is to simply label it. You can say to yourself, breathing in, breathing out, or simply rising, falling. Another anchor that we can often use, especially in our yin yoga practice, is the anchor of sensations in the body. So we start to notice what we're feeling. What's the most obvious sensation that you're experiencing in this moment? And this will become quite useful during our yin yoga practice when we'll get a lot of juicy sensations. And there the practice is simply notice the sensation, but don't react to it. Whatever happening is just happening. With the caveat that if the sensation becomes painful, then your inner guidance, your inner wisdom should tell you that it's appropriate 
to mindfully move. Before we end our meditation, just allow your field of awareness to expand. Begin to feel the floor beneath you. Become aware of all the sounds around you. And slowly open your eyes. And lean back enough that you can release your legs. If you've been sitting for any length of time, take a moment to massage the knees, circle the ankles, get the blood flowing again back into the lower body. And now you're ready for the next activity. You may wish to establish the habit of meditating for maybe three, four, or five minutes before each yoga practice, and then again for some period of time at the end of the practice, maybe a little bit longer, five or ten minutes. And this way we can use the meditation as bookends to help begin and end our practice. Certainly at other times you might want to just do a full practice only of meditation. Sit in meditation for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, even 45 minutes. But going beyond one hour is counterproductive. And if you are going to get up to those longer periods of meditation, it would serve you well to find an experienced meditation teacher who can guide you. Mindfulness can be practiced at any time, anywhere. It's simply just being with what's happening right now in this moment. We can practice mindfulness while we're eating our meals, say our breakfast. So rather than surfing the web, reading the paper, talking, listening to the TV, we would just simply eat and become aware of eating. You can practice mindfulness while you walk into your car, while you're waiting for an elevator, or line up in an ATM, when you're waiting for a meeting to start. This practice of meditative awareness is available at any time, anywhere. The more we practice it, the stronger we'll get at it. It's like we're exercising our concentration muscles. So the more we use them, the more we'll be able to use them. For the yin yoga flows, which will be comprising of the performed versions of the various asanas, we will begin with a short opening meditation, and then we'll close with a slightly longer closing meditation. If you'd like to learn more, visit the website at www.inyoga.com.